because Shannon represents everything. What's going on with the fracking, what's going on with the U.S. military, going through Shannon, violating Irish neutrality, applies to the whole world. It's not a small issue, it's a huge issue. And the repercussions for it, and the fact that Ireland can stand up to it, is phenomenally important. Our man called Paddy Power wants to build a 500 million euro <coughs> regasification terminal in this door. Nobody in Ireland knew that frac gas was going to be imported from the US. It's amazing. Half a billion pound project. Half our current demand for gas in additional gas coming into the country and not a word about it. And then when we took them to court, they tried to buy us for a million euro. That didn't work, thankfully. That case there now has been referred to the European Court of Justice and we may not hear back for 18 months about that. What's amazing is that since 2005, when America decided to frack, and it was backed by the Obama administration at the time, over a third of all of the additional emissions that have been pumped into the atmosphere globally have come from fracking in America. And there's a link directly between all of that additional methane, which is 108 times stronger in the short term, than CO2. So there's a direct link between the weather systems that we're seeing right now and what's happening with fracking in America. We also, what's very important to understand is that methane only stays in the atmosphere, most of it, for about 12 years. So if we're serious about dealing with climate change, the obvious thing to do is to take the methane out. It's very difficult to take the CO2 out, but we can take the methane out and get a dramatic reduction of risk in terms of climate change. At the same time, as we're talking about climate emergencies and the world is working supposedly to do something about climate change, we're actually going further and further into methane, which makes no sense. There is no climate action if we're following methane in a situation like that. The company has said that it wants to build a couple of huge data centers now in the store, which are looking to use maybe 30% of our electrical demand over the next 10 or 15 years, and they want to power them directly with frac gas from the US. Now that's not a runner in Ireland. But yet that could all happen very quickly without anybody knowing about it. And in fact, a very important decision is going to be made in the next week or two around that. First of all, I want to appreciate all of you for being here because I think all of you are concerned with what's happening to our planet and to the people and to the living species that live on this planet, which are in dire threat right now. The threat is very, very real. It's not a distant threat, it's an immediate threat. And the biggest threat that we face today, the biggest implementer of that threat is the US empire, its military, and its military industrial complex, which is only seemingly only interested in profit, power, and gaining more wealth and more power, regardless of what it does to the environment. And they have to live here also. So it's a kind of insanity that we're facing. I mean, when you think about it, you know, the, the fracking and the wars and the militarization and the pollution that comes from the military, I mean, it's not only hurting us, it's hurting everybody. What about their children? But they don't seem to think of that. But we do, all of us. And I'm looking out here at all of you and I know that all of us, if we act together, if we act resolutely, if we are willing to take a step forward, we can do something. We can really do something. Even one person can do something. But when we join together, when it's more than one person, we can really have an impact. And we have to have as much impact as possible. We just have to. The children are depending on it. All life is depending on it. It's depending on us on every single one of us. And what I do, and what I encourage other people to do, is take it personally. This is your world. Each one of us, it's our world. And the children, it's our responsibility. And we gotta listen to people like Greta Thunberg, what she says, it's black and white. The world is being destroyed as we sit here. What we're doing here is just a small part in our concept of peace at home, peace abroad. We had friends here in Ireland who've been fighting this issue on Shannon for many years. They encouraged us to internationalize awareness of the issue by coming here and 
helping them do something about it. We had not originally planned to go on the airfield, but the morning when we were going to go demonstrate in front of the terminal, we learned that a U.S. contract aircraft had just landed with U.S. troops and weapons on board. So Tarek and I decided to get our way onto the airfield. We were on the airfield for about 20 minutes, and apparently someone in the administration noticed and said, maybe those lads shouldn't be out there. And a vehicle came out with its bright light going around and around. And very kindly, air support security person said, do you have authority to be out here? Tarek said something like, we have authority because there's a crime being committed and we're trying to prevent it. They said, well, that's very good, but you really have to do it. He said, well, people have been trying to do it legally for a long time and haven't gotten anywhere, so we decided we would do it this way. But we'd be much happier if you'd go inspect that aircraft. They declined to do so. But at any rate, we finally got out on bail after 12 days in the prison. 2,500 euros each, and they had made us surrender our passports, which is why we have the pleasure of being your guests here tonight. It's been a terrific experience. The Irish people have been so welcoming, so supportive of our cause. Now what we are pleading with the Irish people to do is go a step beyond the verbal and really put the heat on your legislators to enforce the neutrality which you claim. But the great thing about resistance is you get to associate with people like Ken, and we're a great group. And it's fun, and it's inspiring. So when you take that step forward, when you take that resistance and you actually do it, yeah, we've been in prison, yeah, we've been in jail, but we can hold our heads up. And my daughter respects me, and his grandchildren and his family respects him. And that's so important. And we respect ourselves, and we associate with other people that we respect. All I can plead for is for each one of us to do everything that we can. Our lives are at stake. The life of the planet is literally, we have to get that. It's very hard to get because just like nobody can envision their own death, you can't really imagine not being here because you've always been here, right? But it's very hard, you know? But we've got to realize that this planet that we depend on is severely threatened. I mean, we don't have a great chance of saving it. But that's why we have to do everything we can, every one of us. And every one of us is critically important. A thousand U.S. soldiers pass through Shannon weekly and destroy the concept of neutrality. They only bring corruption and abuses, suffering and criminality. The Irish government is complicit in rendition. In war crimes, it's a role that they do play. Yes, they allow the transfer of munitions and victims kidnapped by the CIA. The U.S. forces brutalize and torture detainees just for being who they are. So many children killed in all these wars while the U.S. breaches international law. So we say to you who fight for peace and justice, we must reaffirm Irish neutrality and all together we must stand united to stop that lawless country cross the sea. Now you know who flies across the sea to Ireland. The U.S. Army has the right of way and Ireland shares the shame of bringing warfare across the sea to countries far away. Stop.
talking.